Okay, I'm going to go through these examples a little more quickly. Uh, I Hopefully you've watched my introduction video on this topic already, so you understand the basic ideas. So our, our goal here is just to do several examples solving trig equations with inverse trig functions. So the instructions for all of these will be solve, and let's make it simple. Let's list four. You could be, list as many as you want, but list four specific solutions, okay? So example one that I want to solve is cosine of theta equals square root of two over two. And if you draw a picture of this, cosine is positive on the right side of the coordinate plane. So our reference triangles could be on the right side. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So you could do square root of two as your horizontal adjacent side in your hypotenuse two, okay? which means that the reference angle here, let's call this theta bar, theta bar is, well, you've got your adjacent hypotenuse, you're gonna do cosine inverse of adjacent over hypotenuse. If you put that into the calculator, if you're in degree mode, you'll get 45 degrees, or if you're in radians mode, you'll get pi over four, and we prefer to think of it as pi over four, okay? So, Let's, let's redraw the picture now, you, focusing on those angles. So this angle is pi over 4, and this angle is pi over 4. Same reference angle, okay? Now, what could theta be? These are theta bar. What's theta? Well, theta is measured from 0. So I need to find all the angles that land here. So rotating from 0 to that terminal side, well, that's precisely the same angle as pi over 4. So theta could be pi over 4, right? But it could also be any other angle that lands there. So we could say plus multiples of 2 pi. So we'll say plus 2k pi, where k is an integer, OK? And that knocks out all of those solutions. So now all we have to do is find all the solutions that could land here. So in that case, theta starting at 0, I always like to start at zero and rotate in the positive direction. Some books differ on that. This is my preference. I rotate from here around to my terminal side. Now in this case, I have to decide how to use my pi over four. The way to look at this is, in, we, let's run through this real quick. If you're, let's look at all four quadrants. All of these have the same reference angle, theta bar. Right here, theta and theta bar are the same because theta from zero is the same as theta bar. Over here in the second quadrant, if I rotate from zero around, the way to think of this is I'm just short of rotating to pi. So this angle would be pi take away the reference angle because you have to back up from pi to get to the terminal side. Down here, you're rotating from zero past pi by theta bar. So this will be pi plus theta bar. And finally over here, you rotate from zero around to this side, you're rotating a little short of two pi. So this is two pi minus theta bar, okay? So you're always kind of measuring from the x-axis using your reference angle. So over here, this will be 2 pi, right, this is 2 pi if you rotate all the way around, but then you back up pi over 4. So 8 pi over 4 minus 1 pi over 4, well that's just 7 pi over 4. And then you have to consider every other angle that lands there too, which is plus 2k pi where k is an integer. And so those are all of the solutions. Every solution to the equation. Now for six, or sorry, for four specific solutions, maybe plug in zero to each of those. If you plug in zero to the first one, you get pi over four plus two times zero times pi. That's zero. If you plug in zero here, you get seven pi over four plus, again, zero, so that's seven pi over four. If you plug in one, you get pi over four plus two times one times pi. Well, that's pi over four 
plus 2 pi, which is the same thing as pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4. Well, that's 9 pi over 4. If you do the same thing for the 7 pi over 4 plus 2 times 1 times pi, 7 pi over 4 plus 8 pi over 4 is 15 pi over 4. And there we have four specific solutions. Okay, so that's our first example, a very basic one just to kind of get warmed up here. All right, the idea, remember, is that any of these angles, any of these infinite angles or any of these finite angles, if you plug any of those in for theta into the original equation here, this should be a true statement. So that's the idea behind solving these equations. Calculus students always seem to struggle with this concept. So it's going to be a good one to pick up while you're taking your trigonometry class. Second example we want to solve is the sine of theta equals negative 0 0.4. And so sine is negative. Well, that means you got, you can think of this as negative 0.4 over 1, and this is opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be negative 0.4, and this will be 1. This will be negative 0.4, and this will be 1. Those are your two possible reference triangles. And again, we have theta, so let's call this theta bar. Now, theta bar in this case is, since we have opposite and hypotenuse, we'll use sine inverse of the opposite side, 0.4 over the hypotenuse, 1. Notice that, again, we always use the positive ratio to get our reference angle. If you put this into a calculator, you're not going to get a nice angle like we did before. So if you're in radians mode, let me check what you'll get here. Looks like you'll get about 0.41. Okay, We prefer not to round. Maybe some textbooks will round. But I prefer just to use, just to use sine inverse of 0.4 to, pre to preserve the precision of our answer. Okay, I'll show you what to do if you do round though. So let's look at what theta can be now. So if we look at theta, focusing on those reference angles, now I'll call this sine inverse of 0.4 for that reference angle, and I'll call this sine inverse of 0.4. So from 0, the first angle that lands there is this. Well, that's just past pi. So theta could be pi plus our reference angle, sine inverse of 0.4. But then we have to consider every other angle that lands here, so we add 2k pi. Okay, Or we could rotate to here, which is just shy of rotating to 2 pi. So theta could be 2 pi minus that reference angle. And then all the other angles would give us plus 2k pi. And then I'll just put over here one time that in both of these expressions, k is an integer. So those are all of the solutions to this equation. Okay, If I plug in k values, so if I plug in 0, then my first angle is going to be pi plus sine inverse of 0.4. <clears throat> and then my second one will be 2 pi minus sine inverse of 0.4. Then if I plug in 1, I'll get pi plus sine inverse of 0.4 plus 2 times 1 times pi, so that's plus 2 pi. Well, pi plus 2 pi is just 3 pi. So I can say 3 pi plus sine inverse of 0.4. Okay. And then for my other guy, if I plug in 1, I get 2 pi minus sine inverse of 0.4 plus 2 times 1 times pi is plus 2 pi. Well, 2 pi plus 2 pi is 4 pi. So let's rewrite that as 4 pi minus sine inverse of 0.4. And now we have four specific solutions. Okay? So if you round, so if rounding, then your, your solution set, your full solution set would be, um, you'd have to add pi plus 
sine inverse of 0.4, you're going to use this guy instead now, your 0.41. So on your calculator, you'll type pi plus 0.41, and you'll get theta is approximately 3.55 plus 2k pi. Or, in this case, you'll do 2 pi minus 0.41, typing this in, and you'll get, sorry, approximately 5.87 plus 2k pi. So it looks a bit cleaner, but it has lost a little bit of precision, okay? So depending on what your goal is here, you may round, you may not. You always need to know how to do it without rounding, though, okay? All right, so let's, let's move on to another example now. Example three. Let's say we want to solve, <clears throat> let's use a tangent now, tangent of theta plus one equals zero. Well, the first thing I want to do is isolate my, t my trig function. So in that case, I'll subtract one and get tangent of theta equals negative one. Now, that's negative one over positive one, right? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So one case is you could have your vertical side negative one and your adjacent side positive one. So that's gonna look like this, vertical negative, adjacent positive one. Or you could have um, a positive one vertical and a negative one adjacent, right? Either case, the ratio equals negative one. So you could do positive one over negative one. So this one's unique. It doesn't involve the hypotenuse. Now your reference angle is the same for both of those. Those are the same triangle. Let's call this theta bar. Theta bar is going to be, well, we've got opposite and adjacent. So we're going to use tan inverse. Of the opposite side, we'll use positive one. Over the adjacent side, we'll use positive one. So theta bar is tan inverse of one. And in your calculator, you should get 45 degrees, or pi over 4. We'll use the radian measure. So now, when I look at theta, focusing on my angles, this is pi over 4. This is pi over 4. My first theta value will be this measurement here, which is just shy of rotating to pi. So theta is going to be pi minus pi over 4 plus 2k pi. Well, that's the same thing as pi minus pi over 4. We can actually add those together to get 3 pi over 4 plus 2k pi. Or the next angle would rotate from 0 around to this side, which is just short of rotating to 2 pi. Sorry, that should be a 0, not a theta. So the next angle could be 2 pi minus pi over 4 plus 2k pi. 2 pi minus pi over 4 is 7 pi over 4. And in both those cases, k is an integer. And those are all the solutions. Okay? Again, you could plug in k values to get four specific solutions. You could do that on your own. But you see the difference. Whenever, whenever you plug your inverse into your calculator and get a nice angle, you, you don't have an inverse written anywhere in your answer. But when you, when you type your inverse into your calculator, like this guy up here, and you don't get a nice number, or a common angle, then you just kind of leave it in terms of the inverse. Those are a little trickier. OK, so, so let's do two more to get a couple different points across. There are several variations of these types of problems. So I think we're on example four now. And let's say I want to solve secant of x minus 2, sorry secant of x minus 2 equals 3. And again, we want to get this guy by himself. So add 2, and we see that secant of x equals 5. And we remember that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So this means that the cosine of this angle x has to be 1 fifth. So now we're in familiar territory. The adjacent side is 1, and the hypotenuse is 5. So 1 for the adjacent, hypotenuse 5. And our reference angle now is x bar, because our angle is x. So x bar, since we've got adjacent and hypotenuse, is cosine inverse of 1 fifth. 
and that is not a nice value in the calculator. So I'm, I'm not going to round anything this time. You know how to do that. I'm just going to focus on how to solve the problem now. Okay. So redrawing our picture, let's look at angle x, focusing on the angles, cosine inverse of 1 fifth is our reference. Let me, let me make this bigger, sorry about that. So theta, or sorry, x, if I rotate from 0 to this side, well, that's precisely the same as my reference angle. So my first x value is cosine inverse of a fifth. Okay, that's an angle. It's this much angle. And then all the other angles that land there, I need to add 2k pi. Or if I look at these angles, that is just shy of rotating to 2 pi. So x would be 2 pi minus the reference angle plus all the other angles that land there, 2k pi. And again, k is an integer. So those are all the solutions. And again, you can plug in values of k to get four specific solutions. I'll let you do that on your own in the interest of time. Okay. Let's do one last example. eight times the cosecant of theta equals negative one. And we want to get cosecant by itself. So divide both sides by eight. And we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So the sine of this angle theta is negative eight. And we can put it over one. So this is opposite over adjacent now. which means since sine is negative, we're going to be going down. Ah, oh, sorry, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. What was I thinking? So opposite's negative 8, hypotenuse is 1. Or over here, opposite's negative 8, hypotenuse is 1. The reference angle, theta bar, well, theta bar equals sine inverse of positive, don't forget positive when you do reference angles, sine inverse of 8. Now, if you put that into your calculator, you're not going to get a nice angle. In fact, you're going to get an error. This is totally impossible. How in the world can one of the legs of a right triangle be bigger than the hypotenuse of a right triangle? Your calculator tells you, hey, wait a second, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. So if, if, if this is impossible, then the, sorry, this is our fifth example. I didn't label that, I guess. If this is impossible, then what we do is we come over here and we say, well, this, this, you can't solve this. And if you can't solve an equation, you say that it has no solution. Okay. All right. So lots of examples here. I want to go back to the tangent one we solved now that you get the idea, uh, because there's another way to, to look at this. So let's, let's look at this picture again, right? So I've got pi over four reference angles in quadrants two and four. This part's not, you don't have to do this, but most textbooks will. So if you're trying to check your answers, it's good to know how to do this. One thing that you notice is between the two angles, the two coterminal sides you see, there's a certain, there's a certain measurement between them. For example, I could rotate from this first terminal side to the second terminal side by rotating halfway around the circle. In other words, I'd be adding pi radians. And I could rotate from this bottom terminal side back to the top terminal side by adding pi radians again. Whenever those measurements are equal, there's kind of a fun little trick. So remember, this first angle here, right, if you rotate from 0 to that angle, is 3 pi over 4. It's pi minus pi over 4, which equals 3 pi over 4. So this angle here is 3 pi over 4. Okay. So in this case, we could, we could describe, and let me see what the variable was for that example, for the tangent one. The variable was theta. Okay, the variable was theta. So theta could be 3 pi over 4. And if I add 2k pi, it's going to give me every angle that lands on that terminal side. But look at this cool trick. 
if I add k pi, right, what's going to happen is I'm not adding multiples of 2 pi, I'm adding multiples of pi. In other words, if k is 1, I'm going to start at 3 pi over 4, and then I'm just going to add 1 pi, and that's going to now knock down the first angle that lands over here. And then if k is 2, I'm going to add another pi, and that's going to come back and hit the next angle that lands on my top coterminal side. And this one statement now describes every angle represented in this diagram. So that's kind of a cool trick if you want to try to use it as you practice. But if you find it to be overwhelming, then you can always just resort back to finding your individual angles and adding 2k pi. Individual angles and adding 2k pi. All right? Nothing wrong with that. This is just kind of a neat little uh, trick you can pick up to write your answers as succinctly as possible. All right? So I hope this video makes sense, gives you lots of examples to work with. Good luck practicing.